The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you get, did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today in our church calendar, this Sunday is what we call Christ the King Sunday. It's that Sunday of the church year when we celebrate our Lord's kingship as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's actually a relatively new addition to the church calendar. It was the invention of Pope Pius XI in the 1920s, in the aftermath of the First World War. He decided that we would have a day in the church year that celebrated Jesus' kingship in contrast with worldly kingship and imperial dominion and domination and nationalism. And so since then we have had this Sunday, this Sunday that is the final Sunday of the church year. Next Sunday of course with Advent 1 in our church calendar we begin a new church year. And so on this Sunday we are to call to mind Christ the King. Now if you read Carmen's article in the newsletter this past week, you will have seen that she talked about the fact that on this Christ the King Sunday, we might expect readings that focus on the, the majesty and the power and the splendor of Christ and His kingship. We might expect images from like the book of Revelation 
images of Christ seated on his throne. We got a little bit of it in our epistle reading today. But in our gospel reading, we get pretty much the opposite. We get this passage from Matthew's Gospel which is not a literal portrayal of the so-called Last Judgment. It really is a parable. And it's one in which he presents this, this image of Jesus as King seated on, his, seated on his throne judging those in the Last Judgment. And we're told that as such, he, he separates the sheep from the goats. A little bit of bigotry toward goats, I think. But, <laughs> but he separates the sheep from the goats. And he, and he says to the sheep, You that are blessed, come sit at my right side. And then he says, when I was hungry, you came and helped me. When I was sick, when I was naked, when I was unwelcome, when I was in prison, you came and showed me love and compassion. And then we're told that they say, really? When was it that we came and took care of you when you were sick, gave you food when you were hungry, something to drink when you were thirsty, provided welcome when you felt unwelcome, visited you in prison? When did we do those things? And he responds, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family. You did it to me. And then, of course, we get the opposite, in which the goats, to whom he says, you are accursed. Because when I was hungry, when I was sick, when I was thirsty, when I was unwelcome, when I was naked, when I was in prison, you did nothing to help me. So the, the separation, the judgment that we see in this parable is based not on what one's beliefs are, what one's doctrinal beliefs are, but rather on what one did in responding to the needs of those who were suffering most. In this passage, we get not the king who is seated on a throne in splendor and majesty. Instead, we get Jesus the homeless. Jesus the hungry. Jesus the thirsty. Jesus the unwelcomed. Jesus the naked. Jesus the prisoner. We see Jesus... Christ the King identifying himself fully and completely with the least of these. Those who have suffered the most. Those who are most in need. Those who are weak and in need of love and compassion. Jesus says, when you showed love and compassion to these, the least of these, those who needed it most, you were serving and showing compassion and love to me. On this Christ the King Sunday, we see an image of Jesus that is countercultural that completely upends our perspective on what it means to see Jesus as our King. Whenever I read or think about this passage, 
I cannot help but remember that when Julia and I had the opportunity to work for the Archbishop of Canterbury in London, we had a couple of, of experiences of being in the presence of the Queen, of royalty. And what I remember about those moments is all of the trappings of royalty and all of the protocols. We ignorant Americans had to be trained and told how to behave in the presence of royalty. And this dynamic created this inevitable distance between us and them. We couldn't speak to them until we were first spoken to. There were certain ways that we had to behave. And you couldn't help to some extent to come away from those moments feeling a little bit less than. As if you were not worthy, almost, to be in their presence. Contrast that with what we see in today's Gospel reading. Contrast that with the image of Jesus' kingship. The Jesus who very intentionally, over and over again, seeks to bridge the distance between himself and others, especially those who are suffering the most, those in most need of love and compassion. We see it throughout the gospel narrative. Jesus very intentionally, intentionally going into those places where the least of these were. The places you weren't supposed to go. And showing the kind of love and compassion that those folks rarely saw. Bridging the gap. Closing the distance to show love. Christ-like love. That's Jesus' kingship. Completely different of, from how we think of royalty and kingship, which is about power and domination, which is about being above others from a place of superiority. Christ the King is very different. Christ the King enters fully into the human condition to transform it, to bridge the distance between God and humanity, to let people know, regardless of their circumstances, that they are loved, that they are worthy, that they are not less than. Some of you may know that our homeless Jesus sculpture that sits out front, the artist, the sculptor, in talking about creating that amazing piece of art, said that it was a visual translation of today's gospel reading. We look at that sculpture, Homeless Jesus, as it's titled. We see the image of Jesus as a homeless person covered in a blanket lying on a bench. And the only way we can know that it's Jesus is by the wounds on the feet sticking out from under the blanket. That is Christ the King. That's what it means to think of Jesus as our King. 
One who, as has been said, one who is in an image of royalty that stoops, that enters into the human condition in a way that brings love and compassion and healing and transformation. So on this day when we celebrate Christ the King, I hope that as you leave, you will take a look, stop, look at our homeless Jesus, and remember, that's what Jesus' kingship looks like. And that's the king who we are invited into relationship with and encouraged to imitate by serving and showing love and compassion to the least of these, our brothers and sisters. Amen.